Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord this morning and give him praise and we thank him for his faithfulness. And then we rejoice in him in all things, in all things. The Bible says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Amen. So we're going straight now to carry on with our teaching on the sundries and coming under the life in ministry. And today we're going to look at one of the interesting, very interesting ones in the book of John chapter 6. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you praise and we honor you for you are good and for you are wonderful. Teach us through your word this morning. Open our eyes to understand what you have written that we may learn and, Lord, grow thereby. May your name be exalted in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Um, John chapter 6 is one of um, very interesting chapters in the new testament and then john chapter 6 if you look at it we today we titled it the crowd everything about john chapter 6 is the crowd very funny very interesting a lot to learn a lot to ponder about and then to see what human nature is all about and what do we learn from this or from it is if this could happen to our Lord Jesus, knowing that in ministry you will come, um, you will get to it. Um, don't be discouraged. Don't wonder what's going on. Don't be carried away. But our learning and our reading and picking out lessons from that should help us to um, do it what the lord has asked us to do so let's get into john chapter 6 to look at the crowd everything about it is the crowd amen and then we read from verse 1 the bible says after these things jesus went over to the sea of galilee which is the sea of tiberias and a great multitude followed him because they saw him and uh, and his miracle which he did on them that were diseased so a great multitude followed the lord this is just what it is and this great multitude that followed him brethren um so many people were there and he's great because they saw the miracles which he did and that was it so that's the crowd for you there's so many reasons why people are in the crowd for uh for jesus a great multitude followed because of the miracle he did in that crowd also we have the scribes and pharisees who were also following to see if there's something to catch out in that crowd we also see those who really just carried on so our prayer is that may the Lord open our eyes to also see our own crowd and how to deal with it. Whether it's a crowd of five people, crowd of, crowd of ten, crowd of fifty, crowd of a thousand, it's just making us aware to know what is around us. Some followed just to see the signs and that's all that's the only reason why they followed and then they just want to see it so the crowd that has come to you are they the crowd of sign seekers or true seekers or they're looking for one thing or the other from the lord so it's good to design so that we are not we're not having um uh, uh, miracle chasers all around us because this is what we could see here some also came because um they had jesus preach so those words motivated them they had jesus preach and those words touched them and genuinely they came to hear him 
to hear what he has to say. That's also the crowd. We also see genuine brethren who had come to church, not for anything, but they came because the word touched them. They want to love Elohim more. They want to hear him more. They want to know his way, not for what they will get, but that they may inherit eternal life. They also are in the crowd. And my question today is, am I one of those genuine seekers? Are you one of those genuine seekers? So let's carry on. In verse 2, we can see there that these great miracles, these great signs, then they came after him. Then we are jumping now in verse 11. And then reading what the Bible had says there, um, Jesus, because they were hungry, he distributed food to them. Everyone ate, and then when they were hungry, he said to he said to um, Philip, "Give them to eat." Philip said, "Where will I get this money to feed these people?" It's a lot. And Jesus said, okay. And Andrew came and says, there is a lad here who had got um, five um, loaves and two fishes. That's fine. Get them to sit down. So while the crowd were still looking for something from Jesus, they were very obedient. So they asked them to sit down. These men sat down in their five, whatever lot or group, they put out fifties or hundreds or whatever but they grouped them and this man sat still very quiet as long as people are still waiting to get things from you they're going to be obedient they're going to hear as long as they're still looking for that miracle whether for a child or to get a job or to get a new house or to buy a new car or to you know um, get married or whatever they're looking for they follow diligently they are very obedient they will sit quietly they will pray when others are praying because they are still looking that's what we could see from this crowd because we see them later on <laughs> who really they are it's quite very funny Look, reading this this morning, so ah, uh, they will remain absolutely quiet. So, but don't mistake those following; it might not really be real. When people are desperate, they can do anything. When people are in want, oh, they can, you know, align. They will be there, just like us here in School of Ministry, and those of us in this class who had come to learn. Why they are still learning? They are open. Okay. they do the assignment they listen to the message and everything all we said is please make sure you are not one of those that have come for the certificate then when you get it and then get yours running then you go out but be among the true seekers be among the true disciples be among those that Jesus will look on and says yes she is part of the crowd so when you see all these things don't be carried away let's look at verse 14 then these men that have seen these miracles said for a truth this is a prophet is a prophet therefore the jesus perceived that they will make him king because they've heard, they've seen things. He perceived that they would make him king. He withdrew himself from the crowd. This is a learning for every one of us. He perceived. No, they want to make him king. He removed himself. It can happen to us today. All of us, especially when the world is going and the Lord has used us in a wonderful way and to reach out to people, pray for people, they are healed, you know, pray for people, they get their miracles and then the church is growing, we teach and people get born again. The tendency is for everyone, so don't get it wrong, is to behave exactly the way these people genuinely did in John chapter 6. People will appreciate you. 
people will um, come round to you. People will even give you the oh, I just want to see you. I just want to be with you. I just want to give you a hug. Oh, I just want to, and uh, so many other things in appreciation, genuinely for what the Lord has used you to do. Now, why are we getting this up? Look at the action reaction of our Lord Jesus. He withdrew himself. When people exalt us beyond measure, when people out of their genuine heart but want to take us a bit higher than where God once had placed us, what do you do? Will we do what Jesus did? Or will we sit down and take all those glory? Ah, they call you the powerful man of God. Amen. They put red carpet on us. We walk on it. Oh, they put us on Hammond and carry us on their shoulders. We are we allow that. And they carry our Bibles, handkerchiefs, and all those things, and they try to exalt us more than we should be. No, because that can go into the head, to be honest. It's just, remember, it's not like, oh, those who do it, you shouldn't know. It comes so subtly. We need to watch out for them. They come from genuine heart. But it's now for us to know that we are nothing without Christ. All he did, he did it through us and not to accept to God's glory to ourselves. A lot have done that in ministry. A lot have allowed what God has given to them to go into their head. And they are unapproachable. They feel so proud. They feel so elevated. Their words become beginning and the end. And pride sets in. Look at what Jesus did here. He withdrew himself when they came to make him king. He perceived it. And he says, no. But look at another thing we learned from there. Make him king. Herod is still there. The Roman soldiers is still there. Pilate is still there. At least Caesar is still right there in Rome. So what power do this crowd have? Helpless crowd that the soldiers are still going after them, making them to pay tax, the tax collectors. If you don't pay, you're in trouble. They're even looking for who will rescue them. And now they want some to make someone king. No. That would be the king of fake kingdom <laughs> because it's not real <laughs> the powers that be are still there so jesus cannot be made the king of fake kingdom he is the king himself so what is it that man will make him the man he created <laughs> he's the king of all kings so brethren let's watch out when all these things are coming, Satan stages them to throw off men and women of God. Those he had given anointing, Satan will stage it in so many ways. If he tries to give you a cup of sugar to take, wow, you said no, because you recognize the cup of sugar immediately. You said no. He knows that. He will add that sugar to the dough not both into the dough and then glazed it at the same time and they offer you <laughs> probably you'll be dazzled you'll see the, the 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 glare of the um the glaze and you wouldn't want to he said no there's still sugar he will put it in the actual cake and add all those things as you're eating it mm, it's the same cup of sugar he had given to you watch out watch out if he tries this way he didn't get he will try the other way he will he will try the other way please let your eyes be open our lord yeshua jesus right here withdrew himself because no man can make him king so brethren this is what we all need to watch out and stand strong to make sure that what we learn from john chapter 6 we put it into practice amen so let's carry on to see the same people when jesus said to them look you are not looking for me look not for the meat that perished now the real word has started coming 
Don't look for the meat that perishes. But look at the one you will eat and hunger no more. The one you will eat, drink and thirst no more. The eternal word. Now, you came to look for Jesus. And he's giving you what he has got. People got angry. Got offended. What does that mean? Will he kill himself and give us his flesh to eat? That's better than hard saying. And give us his blood to drink. But we came for eternal life. People come to church to get temporal blessings. They want to be prayed for so that they can get a house. They can get, but the preacher says there's more than a house. In John chapter 14, the Bible says, In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't tell him. I would have told you. Then, now the word is coming. We should take that word with gladness to look for the eternal life instead of getting angry. There's no need. Jesus gave them the word. The word they ate is only bread. And they are hungry and they have come back in again to look for who oh, are looking for you. Great multitude. You eat that and come back again. You get that house, it will be repossessed. You get that house, it will get burnt. You get that house and then termites will eat them for those who are living in tropical countries. You get that house, thief will break in and take them. That temporal thing you're looking for, that car will have an accident. And even if it doesn't have seven years, eight years down the line, it's going because it's ordinary machinery made people's hand. It will go. They will rot. The, the, the iron will rust. And Jesus was giving them what they will eat and hunger no more. The word of eternal life. The word that liberates. The word that opens the eyes. Amen. The actual word. And that was where the problem came. And then he, the zeal and everything they came with all did what turned. And for us today, there may be people you're trying and then to do good for. They have come to church. You supported them, you stayed by them, prayed with them and helped them to get their miracles and they turned back against you. Don't worry. Read John chapter 6. You'll get encouraged. You've done all, you've loved them. Carry on to keep loving. Carry on to keep praying. It happened to our Lord Yeshua. When truth is being said, do people leave the church? Of course. Why the miracles are happening and everybody's dancing and everybody's happy, testimony galore and the preaching is all what we go we do for us and give to us is okay. But call people to Tuesday Bible study. When is the Bible study? Very few people come. They want to come on Sundays only to hear the good part and then to get the faith message and if you start preaching the real message people will start leaving the church i want to encourage everyone and those of you in the class keep on you see what jesus did here he carried on with the truth he did and what happened the crowd left they will leave People will even come to you i say to you oh pastor oh evangelist oh church leader you your message is just coming, ping, 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 very hard. Why not preach love? Why not preach God is good all the time? Forget about sin so that we can keep the people. If you listen to that, you will compromise the grace of God. People need the Lord. Satan has done all he can to take us away from faith. He's fighting through so many ways so many so what we all need now is the word of eternal life that's the only anchor we have that's the only thing we can hold on because if only in this life we have hope we will be of all men most miserable so we don't need it at all 
Not at all. They left because Jesus preached the right gospel. Those of you who are crying, oh, I've only got 10 people at church. Why? Because you're teaching. Don't worry. It's better you get 10 people going to heaven than to get a crowd of 5,000 who will miss heaven. Get a crowd of 5,000 that have itchy ears and only go for what they want to hear. Look here. They left. They left our Lord Yeshua very quickly. Even before then, they started kind of uh, pleasant words, pleasant three flatteries. We can hear that. Oh, you addicts. Nobody is like you. You are everything. But just says the wages of sin is death. Read Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 and 3. Start with Romans chapter 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and carry on. Go back to John chapter 3 and start reading. Many will leave, but why would they leave? So these are the things we can see. The crowd, the crowd that will come. So many characteristics. While things were going well, they are okay. They are quite fine. They want to do all sorts. They will donate to the church. They will do, you know, parties. They are going to be okay. But when the true word of life start coming, there will be some reactions. So the fake ones will go. So please don't be carried away. Remain. Remain in the word. Remain what Jesus had kept us in. And what finally do we see there? And when they were all going, Jesus said to the disciples, the Bible says all of them went. The crowd went. I'm sure we've not experienced that. I know some years ago in 2007, we experienced that here in London. The first crowd that came to us. So why the word was coming? Everybody left. I was left with the children. Apostle went to the U.S. And then we came into church that day, expecting the people to come. No one came. Why? There was a crowd that came to us. And that crowd was told, ah, these people, when you hear their word, powerful. So their mind was, we're going to do miracles so that they get their mortgages, so that they get this. But when they came and all they had was the sincere milk of life, everyone left. Favor did the opening, no, Arise did the opening prayer. Favor did the songs. I did the preaching. Um, Praise did the offering. <laughs> and then Elet did the closing of prayer. And we went. I was still pregnant with destiny. <laughs> we went. That was what happened. 2007. Why? The, what was the crowd? But glory be to God today. We have brethren who are genuine. Genuine brethren across the world. Satan didn't know in 2007 that what God has done today across in various nations is amazing genuine brethren even those on daybreak with the king life they could wake up every morning in the in the u.s 4 a.m 5 a.m they've been praying for years on the third many are teaching even better than we are doing what has been handed down to them standing strong it's amazing. Stand on what the Lord has called you. The crowd will be designed. But today we're going to ask the Lord to give us the grace to design the crowd. The originals are going nowhere. And Peter said, where are we going? You have the word of eternal life. Amen. And Jesus said to them, and because they have stayed, they will judge. They will remain. And today, by the grace of Elohim, they are in heaven smiling. Wherever they are, they are smiling, waiting for us to join them. They made it. 
those who endure to the end. May we endure to the end, we shall be saved. The real people in the crowd, they will desire the sincere milk of life. Amen. As the deer pants after the waters, so their soul will pant after the Lord. The real, genuine people in the crowd, nothing deters them. They didn't come for um, the um, the things of this life. They didn't come for the flowers that will die off in a second. No, they came for genuine to seek the Lord, to know him with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their soul. Every word coming from the Bible is sweet music to them, is nourishing their soul and they are growing. They are going out, making disciples of all nations. They come together. Jesus wasn't worried. He knew. That was why when they wanted to make him king, no. He can't be the king of fake kingdom. He knew they were not. That's the crowd. That's the multitude. Don't be carried away with the number chase. A lot of people are all about number chase. Oh, how many are we now? You know, I was you know reading something somebody posted on Facebook and says, everybody carry on, carry on. We are now 600,000. We need to hit um, a, a, a million. We carry on. And people were going, sending all those things. And when you open the, to listen to them, they have no message. All they are doing is just keep sharing. Keep sharing what? What? Number chase. Some in ministry have been feeling very discouraged and they're saying, God, is mine different? Look at so, so so brother, look at so 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 church. They have this, they have grown, they are this. So, no, if the Lord open your eyes to go back again to read John chapter 6, to discern the crowd, you will be content with just the disciples that are faithful. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning and we give you praise for encouraging everyone in this class through this teaching. There's quite a lot to say about the crowd, but we've just summarized it. Holy Spirit, minister to everyone who had not been happy or crying, you know, looking or chasing the crowd or being discouraged by what they are seeing in ministry. Heavenly Father, Let's get the word through you and may we all be encouraged to carry on. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.